We return again to our continuing series this week, Nigeria, Pain and Promise. Tonight, special correspondent Nick Schifrin looks at corruption in the oil-rich nation, from allegations against the former government down to the police on the streets. On the streets of Lagos, there's a saying, every day is for the thief. Godwin Ekpo's thief was supposed to be his protector. Do the police often ask for money? It's still coming in Nigeria here. I feel it's in front of taking money from people by force. Godwin drove a taxi called a tricycle. Last month, the police officer stopped him to demand a bribe. He requested for 2,000 naira. That's about $10, what Godwin would have made working as a taxi driver that morning. So I said, I'm coming from the church with my family. He was with his wife and their three children. He refused to pay. All of a sudden, I had a gunshot twice. And now I went down, holding my jaw like this. And the blood was just gushing out. So the bullet came right through there? Right through here. The officer had shot him for refusing to pay $10. What gave him that audacity to shoot the gun to innocent people? We were not robbers. The perception has been that the police is corrupt. You can abuse the rights of the average citizen. Kemi Okinyoto studies police corruption. She says low salaries and a culture of impunity has led to this. Videos on local media show police officers inside people's cars demanding money. The officer exhibits no shame. His victims reveal no surprise. This is the number of the ATM. This is the code. I don't have 25,000 okay, come. I don't have more than 2,000. In Nigeria, this is daily life. For some, when the person asking for money has a club or a gun, bribes are more like ransoms. The low level corruption makes it worse when you come in contact with police officers. When you go and report a case and a case can easily be turned against the person that has come to report. In Nigeria, the corruption is sadly everywhere. Shopkeepers here say police preside over a market for fake medicine. I've been asked for bribes by police officers, by soldiers, by airport security officers behind the x-ray machine. In Nigeria, the cancer of corruption has been spreading for years. Often it starts in childhood. The Kaletu school in Bauchi State looks like many rural Nigerian schools. This is the second grade classroom. No desks, no chairs, no pencils, no books. How can a student who sit on the ground listen to the teacher attentively? Yes, they have the Principal Musu Muhammad points out this is mostly not about poverty. The 2014 federal education budget was $2.4 billion. Mohammed accuses the government of pocketing money that's supposed to educate children. The selfishness of the, some of the leaders, I cannot say all of them, but some, they have selfishness. So this was built in 2009? Nine, yes. He's been asking the local government to fix this classroom. The wind blew the roof off six years ago. So the contractor used this wood they, instead yeah. of the wood they were supposed to use? Uh, they're supposed to use since, uh, two by four, they use two by two. The thinness of this wood, this is why the roof came down? Uh, that's it, that's it. So they're keeping a part of the money uh, they're that's supposed it. to uh, use uh, for uh, construction. Uh, that is true. It's and true. they're putting it in their pockets. Uh, that's it. And that's actually what happened. And there's no follow-up of government. Is that because the government is in on it? That's it. That's the problem. Hey. Why is there not money coming to these schools? It's corruption from our leaders. Sylvester Yibis is a local human rights campaigner. He accuses government officials of theft. During their campaign, they will set all sorts of uh, promises. When they come on board, they will do this, they will do that. But at the end of the day, they will lose our money to foreign countries. You might think a man who travels with people who call him king, who drives around with a police escort, and who rides in the back of a Rolls-Royce limo is a member of Nigeria's corrupt class. But Muhammadu Sanusi is one of Nigeria's most progressive voices. In Nigeria, there's no accountability at all. And that's why I think uh, Nigerian corruption is worse than corruption in many parts of the world, because it's the worst type of corruption. It's stealing. Sanusi is the Emir of Kano, Nigeria's second highest Islamic authority but he's most famous for what he did wearing a suit. We don't have development because vested interests continue to rape this country and continue to take the money out.
That's a TEDx conference in 2013 when Sanusi was Nigeria's central bank governor. He accused former president, good luck Jonathan, former petroleum minister, Dezani Alison Maduki, and the federal government of looting $20 billion of the country's oil wealth. In response to his whistleblowing, he was fired. Frankly, uh, I think a uh, billion dollars a month under Jonathan was about what we're losing. Nigeria is Africa's richest country because of oil, but the oil deals are as opaque as the oil being exported. U.S. and British officials told us Alison Maduki might have personally overseen the stealing of $6 billion, the most common method, awarding oil contracts to companies owned by friends. Basically, all it does is allows a group of people who themselves don't have any kind of operating background to, to pay uh, $50 million dollars okay uh, for access to the crude oil in blocks valued at over two billion dollars and they just take the crude ship it out and don't return the money and there is no trace of where the money has gone the second way to steal was by literally making oil on ships disappear we obtained this document that shows in february 2014 of 32 ships carrying nigerian oil 19 nearly 60 percent didn't deliver the same amount of oil they picked up someone gets a contract to lift crude from the terminals to the refineries and in between that crude is still, is still in the high seas. Alison Maduki's lawyer declined to speak to PBS NewsHour but in London where she's recovering from cancer treatment she told a Nigerian journalist quote how can 20 billion disappear I challenge anyone to come forward with facts showing I stole government or public money I've never stolen Nigeria's money. If she goes to court and she's jailed, for example, it sends a signal, I think, that there is a day of reckoning. President Muhammadu Buhari has promised that day of reckoning. He was elected on a platform of fighting corruption. President Buhari's campaign against high-level corruption began on this street and this house, or more like this mansion. This is where the former National Security Advisor lives, and armed soldiers arrived here and took away five bulletproof cars, seven assault rifles, and arrested the former National Security Advisor for having them. But Sambo Dasuki isn't only accused of hoarding his own weapons. He is accused of stealing billions of dollars from the military when he was supposed to be supplying them with weapons. They make money instead of fighting the bad boys. They are not giving us that money. Huh? That is the corruption now. This man is an active duty Nigerian soldier. He was on the front lines against Boko Haram when he was shot through the knee. People firing from both left and right. We had so many casualties. He says he and his men were so short of resources, their weapons didn't have bullets and their trucks didn't have gas. There wasn't fuel in the vehicles. You had to donate money even just to fill the truck with fuel. The commanders came out categorically telling us that there is no fuel and they don't have money. It's either they will allow a leave us there to die or we will find an alternative. It appears Dasuki had the money. This document obtained by PBS NewsHour is a request by Dasuki's office for $47 million. A Nigerian official says the money left the central bank in cash at night in armored vans. A second document shows Dezani Alison Maduki's name on the bottom. This transfer was for $289 million to the National Intelligence Agency. The problem with that, the official National Intelligence Agency budget was only $160 million. There's no doubt that that, that situation is strongly linked with corruption. Professor Balaji Awasanoi advises Buhari on how to combat high-level corruption. Because money that was appropriated was not being used for purpose. That's why I said corruption weakened and escalated our insecurity. Because money that was appropriated for weapons, for welfare, it wasn't getting to base. Dasuki has denied the charges. His lawyer, Raji Ahmed, declined to be interviewed on camera. But he told me, quote, all the procurements were made at the request of the military. They identified the contracts or the suppliers, and Dasuki merely sought the approval of the president. That explanation doesn't satisfy the new government. Those who have looted public funds are going to be prosecuted, and those funds are going to be recovered. I'm feeling serious pain now. But fixing this won't be easy. There's a saying here, when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. And now went down, holding my girl like this, and the blood was just gushing out. 
That's when I had my children shouting, Mommy is dying, Mommy is dying, Mommy is dying. I quickly stood up and went back to see my wife. And the blood was just pumping out. When I held her, I discovered that the bullet entered here and came out here. Godwin's wife had been nursing their newborn when she was killed because her husband refused to pay a $10 bribe. She cherished me so much and her children. She loved me so much. Since my parents died and left me, my wife that been assisting me is gone. I would like my children to be great men and women in this generation. And I'm going to train them. <laughs> my God. Corruption stole this man's wife and these children's mother. It will keep stealing Nigeria's future unless Nigeria finds a way to change. Nick Schifrin, PBS NewsHour, Kano, Nigeria. In tomorrow's final story, Nick will detail the abuse and mistreatment of gays in Nigeria.